Okay, we're gonna Okay, we're gonna go ahead and start. So uh Uh, we're going to go ahead and start. Let me get this whole, my, all right, now we're good. <laughs> uh, the connection with what I want to speak about today is, uh, is it's all how we see things. It's how we propel things in motion, how we look at vibrations within our lives. And that's what I really want to speak about today because... What we need to do is find out exactly how we see things. And so when I teach class, when I work with individuals on teaching class, putting things in motion, it's when I teach meditation, I teach you to look at the path around you. Look at what you're walking on. Look at what the, the door is or the fence or whatever you're walking by. Everything within that vibration in front of you has a meaning. It has that connection, whether it's a, a metal fence, a wood fence, a tall fence, small fence. There's meaning within that vibration. It's how it means, what it means to you. When in life, we kind of look at things in a angular situation, trying to find out uh, how it feels to us, how it sets the vibration for us. I think most time people get in trouble because they they try to make everybody extremely happy with everything that they do and then they come find out that a lot of the people probably aren't happy <laughs> so uh, the question is seeing and how it works for you because we've all set the path we've set the journey the path but how we maneuver the path how we walk the path how we get to that part of the path that we've envisioned that we're supposed to be. That's when we have to kind of really rely on ourselves. We can allow other people to give us options within our lives and tell us, yes, yes, that's the right way. But we have to feel extremely comfortable with that journey, with that vibration that we put out in front of us. We have to feel that comfortable situation. We have to connect to that vibration. Because if you don't connect to it, what's going to happen is somebody else will set the vibration for you. So you don't want somebody else setting the vibration for you. Right now we're going through COVID. We're going through all these things at this point. And now we're in the middle of an election. We're all this stuff. And everybody's telling us exactly how they feel, how they think, how they want us to think. We have to allow ourselves to be who we are and decide the path that we personally would like to journey on. That which makes us happy, which makes us content within our lives. I've always been a believer that everyone has their own journey, their own path, their own vision of where they should be in their life. We pick our families, the vibrations in our lives, the situations that have happened in our life have made us who we are. And as that, we in turn follow a path a journey with our lives to get us to where we need to be. So you have to realize how are you where you need to be. And when I say it's all on how you see things, how do you see your life? How do you see this part of your life? Are you happy with it? Are you content with it? Do you really want to change? I have so many people when I do readings for them. They say, oh my God, Lou, I don't want to do the last cycle. Oh, do I have to repeat that? I don't want to do it again. So we, we have to really look at what we don't want to do, what we don't want to see in front of us, and envision, and envision or visualize something else. Whether you do dream boards or you do dream situations or you do vision boards, whatever you do to to assess your visualization skills into the future. What are you visualizing your life to be? What are you visualizing it to connect to? What are you visualizing you need to have in your life? If we believe that we deserve it, if we truly believe that we can get it, there's a very good possibility, unless it's some kind of life lesson or some 
life encouragement within your life that you're not supposed to, you'll receive exactly what you're asking for. A lot of people will ask for money, prosperity in their life, and the next thing they know, they get two five dollars, or they find five dollars, they find twenty dollars on the street. And as far as far as far as their guides are concerned, the people in spirit, they've dealt with the energy. You've got twenty bucks. You have twenty dollars more than you had yesterday because you've asked for money. You didn't put a figure on the money. You just asked for money. Same thing with health. We just want to be healthy. But how healthy do you really want to be? It's how you see it. Do you want to be perfectly healthy? Uh, do you want an illness just to go away? Or do you want to be perfectly healthy? I always explain to people, we sure we go through illnesses in our lives, but do you really want to be just healthy? Or do you want to be perfectly healthy? Or the reason why not? So you're allowing your guides to bring you the best from that part of the scenario, allowing you to accept it. And when we look at what's going on in our lives, things around us, do you see numbers? Do you see numbers constantly in the vibration, 111, 222? Or you see a number like 230, and then you see the number 230 again. You see the same number go on and on and on again. It's usually probably angelic presence talking to you or guides or protectors or people in your life. So you kind of stop at that point and say, all right, I got the message. Why? What are you trying to tell me? And then you allow them to move in the vibration. Allow them to connect to your vibration and show you. It usually takes about a week, week and a half for your guides to pretty much answer you, at least start to show you what they would love you to look at. It's what you see, what you perceive. Spirit brings the best thing, best thing in the whole world for you, and you don't see it. You don't, you don't see it at all. You're, you're not going to collect it if you don't see it, if you don't have some kind of connection to it. When I teach the nine cycles, the nine cycles of life, what we do is we set the vibration. The first year of a vibration, first year, we set, we connect, we, we envision what we want in our lives. We throw it in the foundation that we're going to build on for that complete cycle within our lives. The second year, we kind of get a lot, one final look at it. We kind of, it's like the concrete people have come and poured the floor. We're just making sure all the pipes are on the floor. Everything's where it needs to be. The foundation is holding. Everything's exactly positioned exactly where it needs to be before the concrete guy leaves with the foundation. Then we sit around in our third year and we allow our guides to bring in our lives what we're going to build with on the property, what we're going to connect, what we're going to envision. And then your fourth year, you're going to go ahead and build what you're supposed to build. Fifth year, you get to sit back and you get, you get to decide what the interior is going to be. Get the walls and everything up, roof on, everything up your fourth year. What are you putting in the building? What's still left there? What do you need to go get more? Do you need to re-envision what you've decided to put in the building? So we have these parts of our lives that we need to envision what we want, visualize the vibration, tell ourselves. It's that voice within you that you have to speak to, not somebody else but you. It's not a guide, some kind of master teacher or some alien force off in the universe somewhere. It's that voice, that higher self that you are, that you need to speak to that, connect to that vibration. That's what you're connecting to. And you're getting it to agree with you. If you keep telling yourself, I really want that, I, that's exactly what I want, but your inner voice is telling you, no, 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 no. You're probably not going to get what you're visualizing here because you're telling yourself, no. The physical body says yes. <laughs> Spiritual body says no. So you have to get both parts of the vibration on the same wavelength. So when you're talking about connecting to a higher sense of consciousness, getting yourself to where you need to be, and Casadega is all about raising the vibration, connecting you to a higher vibration, moving you to that vibration within your life. And vibration for you, it's where you personally vibrate. It's where you vibrate. Do you vibrate at a higher rate? Have things happened in your life and you've lowered your vibration because 
you're you're miserable. You you don't really feel good. Everything. Have you lowered it or are you raising the vibration? You always have to look at. I always tell people, it's what's going on in your life for weeks and weeks and weeks. What's going on around you? What kind of people are you attracting in your life? You attract a lot of needy people, a lot of people that are very miserable, tired, exhausted. Might have to raise your energy. Might have to raise your vibration. And I'm not telling you that everybody, you need to say, oh, my God, everything's a sparkly day and everything's just wonderful. And I have a friend of mine who says, it's a sparkly day. <laughs> well, we don't have to have that sparkly day, but we have to try to envision a wonderful day. Even though things might not be going exactly the way they should be going, still envision a beautiful day. Whether it's for you, and we believe in distant healing, distant vibration, distant healing. Send the same vibration to someone that you love, that you have a connection to. Kind of brighten their day. Brighten that vibration around them. So what you're doing is you're brightening your vibration, but you're also brightening others. That, in turn, would attract people in your life that are going to bless you. Bless your vibration. And sure, it might not be the same day, the next day, or the week after. But pretty soon, the energy within your vibration will start to change and go to a higher sense of consciousness. And that's all we're really looking for in life. We're looking to be comfortable. We're looking to have enough money to last us the rest of our lives. We're looking to be healthy, looking to have relationships in our life that are going to be with us and walk with us and guide us and protect us and all this stuff. We're looking for this very extremely positive energy. So... And to achieve that, we have to know that's how we see it. If we see the glass half full, or do we see it half empty? It's how we perceive what's going on in our lives. And when I tell people to write down things, I write down things and tell them, tell the guides, because most of the guides will overshadow you, look right on behind you, and they will look exactly at what you wrote on that piece of paper. They'll look at it. And by writing your whatever you need, whatever you would visualize within your life on that piece of paper, then at the very end of it, write or better. Your your, your visualization on this spirit on this physical plane, you are here, you are in this vibration. But when you leave, but if you get better, not the same, but better than what you've asked for, that's not going to hurt your connection. It's going to be okay with you, but you at least need this. And start to visualize that within your mind's eye. This is what you're looking for. This is what you're connecting to. This is what you want. And allow that to maneuver in front of you. I do affirmations. I do affirmations every single day. I do them when I wake up in the morning, when I go to bed at night, and they're always on my mind. They're always in my vibration. I'm always trying to change my inner thought. I'm redoing the vibration. I'm doing the vibration every single time. And what I'm doing is I'm changing my cell memory, my vibrations around me. I'm doing that by doing the I am abundant. I am healthy. I am positive. I am awesome. I am and I do these affirmations and things in my life to allow it to change my programming, whether it's from my childhood, whether it's from now, whatever it is. Maybe it's from a past life. I've had programming from a past life that I'm in a process of clearing and redoing and resetting. I get that a lot when I was dealing with, I get that a lot when I was dealing with uh, Joe Vitale out of Texas. And Joe Vitale writes about the whiteboard, the Honoponopono, of different things of how you clear, you regroup, you clear. Honoponopono is a, is a Hawaiian prayer to clear, to clear stuff out of your vibration. The whiteboard is this vibration of writing everything that bothers you, everything that's disrupted within your life or has happened in your life that you still have around you. Then you envisualize yourself erasing the whiteboard. And when I talk about Ruiz with the four agreements, 
the first one is be impeccable with your word. Yeah, people would think that that be impeccable with your word is to tell what you're telling others. The worst language we have is what we tell ourselves. We have to realize what we need to, as individuals, how are we speaking to us? How do we see us? That's what that comes down to. Uh, if you're born in a family like mine, when I was young, it was it was the beatings would start at noon, and there was always this downhearted situation with people in our family. So it was already a very tough trying to feel very positive about all the situations that were going on. So I know that I have luggage from that part of my life because I went through it. It was a, it was very time for my life that I went through, but I'm in the process of still erasing a lot of that residual memory, that residual stuff within my life. Whether I remember it completely or not, I'm allowing my guides, my protectors, the spiritual teachers around me to get it away from me. I had a lady one time, I think it's kind of cute, she was selling something on, on eBay and she was saying it was from the seance room and it was haunted. And I called her, and I said, you have nothing haunted. And I'll, the first word of her mouth was say, be gone with you, sir. <laughs> ah, and I thought that was kind of cute because I thought that, I said, yeah, because the energy, the vibration, just be gone. Be gone with you, sir. Be gone. Be gone over there. Be gone away from me. And allow me to breathe. Allow my vibration to breathe. And when, whatever's going on in your life, whatever's going on in your vibration, whatsoever going on in your life at this point in your life, it's not because it's supposed to happen this way. It is the journey that we've got this far. You might have traveled across the prairie now in a covered wagon, and pretty soon you're going to get yourself into a beautiful automobile. But sometimes we cut short. We allow ourselves to stay where we are instead of moving to that next vibration, that next connection, knowing that we can have it, we can achieve it, we can get it. Sometimes we just stay put, and that's the same thing with meditations. We stay in a comfortable situation that we never go to the next spot, or we get exhausted from doing something just about when the door's ready to open, we stop, not allowing it to move to the next level, the next vibration. And sometimes you can tell me that it's like, Lewis, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know. I've been doing this for a while. There's still nothing happening. Then you should always tell your guides. I always have a thing I tell my guides. Is there something I miss? Something I should have seen? Something I should have put in motion? Could you please show it to me? That way, I've covered all the bases. Anything I've missed, everything, anything I should have put in motion, anything I should have done, please show it to me. And allow them to maneuver people, events, and situations in my life. Then I keep track of what's appearing, what's showing up in my vibration. So it gives me an idea of kind of what the GPS is saying. If I think I should move and things should change, and then all these people start appearing in my life, let's say from Ohio, I'm probably going to look in that direction because everything in my life is from Ohio. If I want to learn something, then I need something in my life. I need to learn something, put something in my vibration. I will tell my guides if there's something I need to learn or something I need to put in my vibration to increase my net worth, to increase my vibration, could you please show it to me? Then I watch what shows up in my life. I watch what's repetitious and what gets my attention then I move off in that direction. I don't listen to everything my guides say. Sometimes i got to argue with them. i got to talk with them, <laughs> have a little talk with my guides. But most of the time, I will at least look in the direction they're kind of pointing. So I kind of see if that's a direction I need to propel myself. Sometimes we're on a path. Sometimes we need to change paths. Sometimes we need to move to a different path. Sometimes we need to go somewhere else instead of the same direct path. And it's only when we get stuck on the path. We get stuck and discouraged. And we don't ask. We just feel like this is our cross to bear. This is our lot to, lot to take care of. This is it. This is all I got. 
that's when we lose sight of that next door, that next vibration that we can move through. And why I teach this is, is I have I just taught a very big meditation class, and people were not they could they didn't get some people did not get to where I was trying to take them. I see nothing. I never see anything. Well, you know, now you now you've told yourself never. It's like when mediums say, "I never get names. I never get them." I don't say that. I get names when they allow me to get names. I never say I never get them because then I will never get them. Same thing as if I'll, I'll never be able to move. I'll never be able to do this. You're telling your higher self and you're telling your guides, never. I'll never be able to do that. Never be able to connect to that. And I learned many years ago with Eloise Page out here teaching natural law, of how natural law works and how it connects to the vibration. Sure, we all watched The Secret many years ago and how The Secret, the law of attraction, that was going to dump everything in our lives really quickly. All we had to do was reenact with the law of attraction. But it was the law of attraction that there were other things involved with that. There was a law of, there was a law of attraction to the law of cause and effect, how we perceive it. Law of gratitude. <laughs> law of gratitude is a very strong law because you have to be grateful. For what's in your life now? Some of you might say, "Well, Lewis, I'm not grateful." <laughs> no, you have to look at something in your vibration, something around you at this point that you're grateful for. That you're grateful for. Tell people if you got up this morning, walk to the bathroom, you're better than some. If you have money in the bank, you're better than some people. If you're healthy right now. Eh, so there's things in our lives that we can be grateful for. We have to focus on those. And that then, in turn, builds the energy to allow other things to propel themselves within your life. It's the question of the law of love. Love who you are. Love the vibrations you're in. Love. And you might say, well, those, I don't love those situations. Well, visualize a different one that you would love, that you wouldn't be empowered with, and allow your guides to go work on that. Guides are not fat, unfathomable here. They aren't people that say, oh, my God, Lou, they are, they are they're exactly who they are. They bring things in our lives. They allow us the free will and choice to choose. And when you're choosing the path ahead of you, it should work for you. It should connect to the vibration with you. you got to remember that. If you're going somewhere and you say, Lewis, I'm just going to go get an apartment. Oh, I'm going to rent an apartment. I'm going to get one. I feel good about it. And you get out of your car and someone's yelling at you. You almost got hit. Oh, everybody's yelling at you. It's just it's just not working. It's like even even the person in the apartment place that it's just nasty to you and it just doesn't feel right. Get in your car and go. Don't think, Oh my god, look, this has got to be it. This is my perfect house. I love it when I get people to do that and they go, It's my perfect place, my perfect abode. And then all hell's breaking loose within the situation. But then they make themselves miserable because they feel that that is where they needed to be. It's not where they needed to be. It's where they placed themselves on the path. It's where they journeyed to. Not where they're supposed to be, but where they journeyed to. Think of your life right now where you are right now. Take a big canter boat view around your vibration. What do you see? What do you feel? What do you envision? And you kind of look at it. Be truthful with yourself, too. Is it good for you? Does it fit the vibration for you? Are you happy? Are you content? Do you love where you are? Do you love what you're doing? What do you see around you? Then when you get the idea of what you're feeling, then start talking to your guides, explaining to them what you would like to see, what you would like to see, and how you would like to see it. That's a key. Because we all have psychic alphabets within our life. Psychic alphabet. Because every symbol, every vibration, everything has some kind of meaning to you. It's a meaning to you. It has some kind of connection to you. It's like when the Indians first saw the Spanish coming ashore. They had no idea who they were. They had no idea what these were. They thought they were gods. Because they all saw these people with helmets on, these boats. They didn't, see, they, they didn't know what they were, so they couldn't describe it. They couldn't 
connect to it. They couldn't be part of that. So they had to try to make their own feeling of the whole vibration because they had no idea. In our lives, we have things that happen in our lives. The spirit produces within our lives to show us that that feeling, that vibration of how we feel about the vibration, how we feel about the vibe, the thought, then move forward. I, you, we, we personally can keep ourselves out of a lot of trouble, a lot of issues within our lives, and we just allow ourselves to listen. Listen to what's going on around us. Do you try to sign some papers and they don't have the pen? Somebody's acting a little stupid next to you. It's just not working. It's just not quite clicking for you. But you feel guilty. You should sign the paper because everybody showed up. Everybody's here. You should sign it. But you don't really feel good about it. But we sign it. And then things happen to fall apart if we put ourselves in that part of the journey. Remember, when you're looking around you at this point, figure out what's best for you, what fits the vibration for you. What would look really awesome here in the very near future? Ask them for that. Allow them to know what you would like to have. You'd like better, but that's what you would like to see. Allow them to maneuver this in the vibrations. Love the earth thing right now has a lot to deal with the energies of a lot of individuals. A lot of stuff. And all we're doing is we're trying to travel in a boat. Some of us are just trying to keep to ourselves till the boat empties. <laughs> uh, but we're trying to just be patient. And with the COVID and the, the government and all this stuff that's going on now, uh, we're afraid to say anything. We're afraid to do some stuff because it just makes people angry. <laughs> uh, makes them angry. People get very angry now. The question is, is allowing ourselves to move to a higher sense of consciousness with this. We don't have to tell everybody how things feel about us. But, I don't have to put my whole life, everything I've ever done in my whole life, on Facebook. I don't have to entertain everybody in the world. Because people will apply into my vibration to help me, and they will cross my path so I can help them. I help family, connections to me, very close to the vibration. But sometimes those become situations in our lives that we need time away time out, time away from the situation. So we're always looking to see what's going on in the path. And when you get quiet in meditation, it's just getting quiet, pausing your vibration, getting quiet. Don't allow yourself to go look for guides or spiritual teachers or wherever you're looking for. When you first start meditating, just sit still and be quiet and be still. My mother used to always tell me that, be still and know that you are God. Be still. And then you would watch. What are your guides, when you first close your eyes, thinking about going in meditation, what are your guides telling you? What are they speaking to you? How are they talking to you at that point? And then see what arrives in your life. Maybe you see a rock. Maybe you see flowers. Maybe you see a different color, a vibrational color. What do you see? And then allow yourself to remember that. And then if you go in meditation the next time and that same rock is there, that same flower is in front of you, that same color, purple, green, some kind of color radiates in front of you, there's a meaning for that. It has some kind of connection to guides or some kind of connection in your life. So you're looking. You're watching. And if I could get everybody just to watch what's happening around their vibration, guides will move you, place you where you need to be. I think I talked last week about meridian lines. We have those that run through the universe. And when we're born on this earth plane, we're born on a meridian line. We're born on it. We're affecting that line. We first give our breath on this earth plane. We're affecting that line of existence because we were born here. During our life, we move. We change our life. We set things in motion. We set our lives in motion. But during our lifetime, we move to different lines of power. If you're on a line of power 
and you're saying, I don't feel good with this line, and people will know when they need to move. They just get a strong feeling, a strong vibration within their life of when they need to move or change their life. Listen to yourself. Whether you know you have to change your life, whether you know something, you have this inner being, this inner vibration, this inner compass within your life to tell you where you're supposed to go. You have this inner compass. So if you will listen to the compass, which way is it focusing? North, south, west, or east? Where is it focusing? Where is it trying to direct you? And if we listen to our inner compass, it will take us down the path that we've chosen. But we choose these paths, whether to affect us or check to affect others. Some people die because they are there to affect the whole, affect the whole consciousness. Not just their consciousness, but the whole. The vibration of the earth plant, they're there to affect that. They've come back to that. We leave the earth plane to affect the, the energy, the highest vibration that we could possibly affect it before we leave the earth plane. We do that. We're here as long as we're able to affect in a positive nature or affect something on the earth plane that affects the energy somewhere else. But it's how we see it. It's how we envision the vibrations. Mediumship teaches us to look at what we see, discern the spirit, discern the vibration, discern what's appearing in front of us, ask questions, ask questions of ourselves and our guides as those images appear in front of us, whether clairsentient or clairvoyant, but we're actually seeing them. People see them when I was in the 60s, Nowadays, people see spirit all the time. They hear spirit, they see spirit, they feel them. They're around everywhere all the time. And people are more open. They're more open to that vibration of spirit helping them, of spirit connecting to them. And it's not just your loved ones. Some of our loved ones are just completely nuts, and we can't listen to them. It is the guides that you handpicked, these guides, these protectors, this higher intelligence that you handpicked for you in a desert plane. You pick the best ones that you could get for the journey. I delegated a lot like uh, AAA. We paid for our membership. We got ourselves here. With that membership comes a nice little traveling guide of where you're going. Because we made them make us a traveling guide, a road guide, a road map to our place where we're going to end up. We started the starting place, and we've got this road map that takes us down these corridors and down this road to eventually we exit and come back home, to our home in the spirit world. So think of your life right now as on a journey. You've got your AAA book in the glove box. You're ready to go. You're ready to head down that path, down that journey, down that vibration towards where you feel like you personally need to be. Now, on that journey doesn't mean you can't take a side street. Doesn't mean you can't go look at an event, something down the road here. Doesn't mean you have to strictly hand to that guide. Every once in our lives, we've got that card GPS going off, recalculating, recalculating, and we don't listen to that. We're just off path. We're off road. <laughs> but we aren't listening to the computer keep going, recalculating, recalculating. We don't give it time to recalculate, especially when we go off path, when we go off journey. We don't give it time. We allow ourselves just to keep running. That's why I explain to people, take time to look, envision what's going on in your life. Look at what's happening in the vibration. Then pick your journey. What is the symbol that you see when you close your eyes? When you meditate at night, do you see something and it keeps appearing in the vibration? Do you have a dream state and you keep having the same kind of dream every night or a multitudes of the same vibrational dream? That is your subconscious. That is your conscious trying to tell you something. That's when you ask your guides. If you tell them, is there something I missed, something I should have seen, something I should have put in motion, could you please show it to me? And if we do that every once in a while and watch, 
guides will produce people, events in our lives. It's, we don't have to be so structured that it has to come a certain way. We also get ourselves in trouble that way. Lewis, I'm going to get money, but I'm going to get money this way. This is the way I'm going to get it this way. We don't allow ourselves to open up to wherever or how spirit wants to produce it. Same thing with a job. We don't. We tell our guys, I need to get another job. But we have our whole focus on a job that we've done before. We don't change it. By asking our guys for how much money we need, how much money we need to, to live on, what do you need? What do you personally need in your life? Allow them to go find the job for you. Because maybe the job you've been doing for all these years, that road for that job is done. It's finished. You need to move to a different career choice, a different vibration. And if you stay on the same course, it doesn't get this major vibration with you. You stay in that same course, and it doesn't connect you to where you need to be. And eventually, guides will drag you. When you have to cross paths with an individual or a situation, your guides will insinuate, please come. Could you please come over here? But they will only please for so long before they pull you to that direction where you have to cross paths or you have to react with this situation because you picked it. It's part of your, part of your map, part of your vibration within your life. So you have to really realize how spirit is working with you. Allow yourself to find that passion with life. Passion. And that is it. That's what it is. A passion. An anticipation of what's going to happen next. Not a negative thing going on, but the positive anticipation of what Spirit's going to give you next. I still have that in meditations because the next door, the next vibration, the next energy field that I walk through, I, I, it's a great expectations of what Spirit's going to show me. I get a thrill out of meditating, even though I've been meditating my whole life. Every time I go into meditation, I get a thrill. Because I don't, under, I don't know where Spirit's going to take me today. What are they going to produce in my life today? Same thing when I get up every morning and work my way through my life. What is Spirit going to show me today? What are they going to produce or who are they going to produce in my life? to encourage me to the next step or the next door that I need to walk through. And if we look at life that way, we can, we can envision our energy as being as high as we want it to be and allow the energy of, of balance to come within our lives. The law, the law of cohesion, allowing everything to fit together like a puzzle to stick together, to hold together like a puzzle. And that is when we study natural laws. You don't have to study all of the natural laws. It's like attracts like. The law of cause and effect. The law of cohesion. The law of gratitude. The law, law of love. Then comes the law of attraction. You have to get some of the other ones in play first before that happens. When I do all the affirmations and things in my life, it's because I've researched a lot of books and things and found something that really works for me. And that's what I do. I do this, these things in my life, these affirmations, that are changing vibrations within my life, no matter what's happening. I'm still saying my affirmations. I'm still changing that inner thought. Years ago, I would say in an affirmation, I am abundant. But I could hear that voice inside of me going, yeah, you know, I don't know. I won't get no money. But... And that voice was playing. Now the voice is getting very quiet over a few, a few years of me doing it. The voice is not as loud as it used to be. The voice is getting more quiet, more in tune with what I'm asking for. And we all want, to, we all want things to happen in our lives, but we don't want to wait our whole life I don't want to get the money that I'm looking for at 98 years old and go, it's finally here. Oh, my God. Thank you, Jesus. I'd like to have it in a good, substantial time within my life. 
Same thing with relationships. We don't really want to wait till we're 88 years old planning on our marriage or our wedding to someone when we want to have it at a certain time in our lives that really works for us. So we have to set the rules with spirit. Spirit says, oh my God, you want a relationship? We got one for you. It's going to be a few years though. No. You'd like to have it now. Or what do you personally have to do to create that? To make it happen? What do you need to do? Allow guides to work in front of you. I taught my grandmother that many years ago. Many years ago, I taught her that. And I told her, I said, if you want somebody, Grandma, you're going to have to start addressing your guides. And she did. She got invited to bingo. She never played bingo. Never played bingo in her life. Never played it. But she got invited. She listened to me. And she said, well, I should probably go. She went to bingo. The only place in this big auditorium was next to one gentleman in the auditorium named Goldie. He looked a lot like Sammy Davis Jr. He even had the glass eye. Goldie. She sat down next to him and they struck up a relationship. Her and Goldie traveled the world for almost 14 years till Goldie passed his spirit. He left my grandmother a, a trust fund to take care of her until she went to spirit. Then the money reverted into charities. But during that time, he took very extremely good care of her. It wasn't exactly what my grandmother was looking for, but it was what my grandmother needed. The question with us is we need to look, uh, we're looking at something that we feel like we absolutely need, but don't throw away the things that are really working, that are really working for us, and think, and try to throw them away. I've had too many people say, oh, Lewis, I just hate my job. I wish I didn't work. I wish I didn't have this job. I wish it wasn't here. Oh, my. Really? Because Spirit hears that. They go, you don't want the job? We can get that. We can take care of that for you. Then all of a sudden, you lose your job. Then you get all excited because now you've lost your job. But you've been consciously asking to leave it. It's, when, it's what we see for what we're asking, what we're putting in motion. That's why we get quiet. That's why we get in tune with ourselves. We try to figure out, if we're asking this, what do we really want our guides to do? If you want out of a relationship, and that relationship ends, and you go, well, what happened? Because you were asking. So allow the relationship to end so you can move forward. But what do you see once the door closes, once the lights come up and everything's done? What do you personally see once you go? Sometimes we move, we place our lives in situations, our lives, because of someone else, because of somebody else's energy, because they're part of our lives. And we move, we, we're, there, we're there for them. So my wife's in Casadega, she's here for me. She probably wouldn't be here if it wasn't for me. She wouldn't be in Casadega. But she's here traveling the path with me. So the question is, is maybe at some point here, I will go travel the path for her. Allow her to have her space within her vibration. We did that in Tennessee. When we moved to Tennessee, we were there for mostly for Marie. We weren't there for me. We were there for her because she needed that. She needed that vibration, and I needed to give it to her to allow her to have this peace of support and balance within her life. So that's what we have to realize. Sometimes we're just in a path. Maybe it's not ours. But if it isn't your path, if it isn't your vibration, is it for someone else? Is it for somebody else's energy field? Remember, I'm in Q&A, so if you want to ask me a question while I'm doing this, you're more than welcome uh, to ask a question, and I can answer it for you. I'm going to keep going, but remember, you can always ask me if there's something going on in your life you'd like me to talk about or help you with. I will. But remember when I, when I first met Christopher Thames, and some people have heard that story with me and Christopher Thames. Before I met Christopher Thames, I was in a large, I was in a meditation, out-of-body meditation, sitting in a large theater on wood benches. And up on the stage was Christopher Temps speaking. 
And I remember the name from the dream, from the meditative state, from the meditative state. I remember the name. And I said, Christopher Timms, that's cool. And he had a wife at that time named Angel. And when I came out of it, he was talking about 13, the number 13, and the energy of 13 at that time in this in this thing. So when I came out of that, my wife made angels. So I told her, we need to make an angel. And she made this big blue angel, blue star, put a blue star on it. Made this big one. I put 13 stones in it. It was just a gorgeous angel. And I called it Christopher. He even had the curly long hair. Two years later, I met Christopher. He, we crossed paths on the earth plane. And we had, like we had, known, we had known each other our whole life. We had connected on the spirit side of life. So there's a lot of things for your dreams, your commitments, your situations within your life are connections to that other realm, that other vibration of spirit. You're connected there when you sleep, when you meditate, when you connect to a higher sense of consciousness. Part of you connects there and downloads energy into your vibration or knowledge into your auric field for you to venture on the path. It's your supply train. It's what comes into your vibration to give you that inner thought, that inner peace, that inner being within your vibration to allow you to move on the path. When I deal with Lucerne, when I deal with Lucerne and I allow Lucerne to come through me, he teaches me every single time he appears in my vibration, he teaches me something different, something that I didn't quite realize before. When he talks about the path, when he talks about the connection to the higher source, he says, you have never lost your connection. You have never lost that vibration within your life. Only thing you have done is hidden it. You've never lost it. And too many of us are, have, we don't give it enough time to find it. We only keep moving down a scary part of the path instead of allowing ourselves to find that inner knowledge, that inner connection. That's what we need to do in our lives. Just not the as how as how it's all how you see things. It's what those things, what those vibrations you see, mean to you. And if they're disruptive, empowering, awesome. What are they to you? And then if they aren't as good as you think they should be, that is when you change them. That's when you talk to your guides and explain to them. Change that. Fix that. You don't wait down the road because once your guides think that you enjoy it, you love it, it's the best thing in the whole world, they'll keep bringing it. It's when it's appearing in your life, that's when you explain to them, no, that don't need that, no. Because I do energy balancing and different things for people, but I can only do that for you as long as you keep the energy in your vibration. I can raise the vibration for you. I can act you to a higher sense of consciousness. I can put sound in your vibration and alleviate a lot of the blockages and things within your auric field. But once you leave my office and once you head for home, unless you allow that energy to propel itself at a higher vibration, you're probably not going to keep it there. You have to be able to allow yourself to move to a higher connection of spirit, a higher connection of the vibration. And so it's keeping a psychic alphabet journal. When things appear in front of you, what do they mean to you? What does a red car mean to you? What does the color blue mean to you? What does yellow mean to you? What does this mean to you? What does it mean? Because sometimes spirit is not slow. They are not slow there by any means. And within two, three minutes, you're going to probably see 20, maybe 30 different symbols. And within that 20 seconds to a minute, you're going to have to make sense of what they've tried to show you. And if you don't have some kind of connection, it's just a mess. It's a mess. Because there's too much. There's too much. What are they trying to tell me? There's just too much here. But if you understand the method, look at what they're trying to show you. Then ask yourself, what does this mean to me? Not because you picked up a book, turned it to a certain page and said, oh, my God, 
Jennifer that wrote the book on symbols says it means this. So it's got to mean that. No, it's what it means to you. It's what it connects to you with. If you read something in a book and that's perfect, you have this inner knowing that's what it means, then that's what it will mean to you. But you have to have that knowing, not somebody else. And when you do mediumship, when you do connecting to spirit, when you're working with the higher energies, the higher connection to the spirit world, how's it working for you? Maybe you don't follow the same path. Some of, some of us out there do not draw within the lines. We don't play within the same sandbox. We venture off to the sides of it, off out into the other realms. Not because we're trying, we're better than anyone else. Some, some of us are probably guides, scouts, that have ventured on this earth plane not to follow a path, but to forge a new one. And maybe you're one of those people that are listening today that you're here to forge a new path. Maybe it's not the path that everyone will follow, but enough people will be in, endeared to you for cutting the path through the wilderness. Because only you could do it. Only you could adventure that path. So if you believe that you have a connection, then allow your guides to work with you. Allow them to be part of this, this journey with you, this connection, this beautiful journey with your vibration. So you have to realize that maybe you're one of those scouts, maybe you're one of those missionaries out ahead of the group, cutting your own path through the wilderness, allowing others to follow, because you took most of the junk on, you decided, you took it on, but you were okay with that, so the rest of the people could follow in a better substantial way, more comfortable way, as they ventured down that path. Some of us have to light the path, the lights on the path, for others to follow. Sometimes the path isn't as easy as it should be, but sometimes we're there. That's why you ask yourself, is this, is this what I need to do? Should I change this? That's an easy one to say. Should I change this vibration ahead of me? Yes or no? Allow your guides to work with you. I've always listened to my guides, always paid attention to them. When I first came out here to Casadega many years ago, uh, I heard my guide yell, you're going to get to Meyer's house. I walked by the Meyer's house. Ooh, I like that house. I said, somebody's living in there. And I could hear my guide say, not for long. I said, oh, my God, you're not going to kill him, are you? Huh. Well, anyway, a couple of weeks later, the lady had fallen. She'd broken her hip. She had to go live with her daughter. So she couldn't live in the house anymore by herself. We bought the house. I don't. I didn't break her hip. I hope Spirit didn't go in there and trip her. <laughs> but Spirit told me I was supposed to have that house. And I listened to them. I said, really? There's somebody in there. But I said, okay, if that's what you guys have got planned, then let's do it this way. And I said, I need the house paid for. I need it paid for. So if you want us to have that house, it needs to be paid for. A friend of mine, my father-in-law, he's a good friend of mine, he, right before we bought the house, he said, what do you need? I told him I need for the house to pay cash for it. He gave us the money to pay cash for the house. The house was ours, paid for. But I explained to my guides what I wanted. They wanted us to have that house, and I should be comfortable in that situation. If you have to be the scout or the missionary heading down the journey with your little machete, heading out into the bushes, spirits should take very good care of you. You should have a little pack animal. You should have a little pack mule with all your supplies on it heading off into this journey. So you're extremely taken care of just in case of any kind of attacks. So you have to realize that guides want to protect you. Guides are not here to be apologetic and family members. And I love that when mediums tell people, oh, my God, they're so sorry. Nonsense. People are not sorry. What happens in your life is you pick the journey, the path, the vibration within these people's vibration. You get born in the family. 
travel the path, but through your vibration. A lot of the people in your life are there to get you to where you need to be, to make you who you are, to make you who you are. If you would have been born in a whole different situation in your life, you'd probably have been totally different than what you are right now. You are who you are from your upbringing, where you were born, how you were raised, and where you traveled in your life. You are where you are because of the individuals in your life. We have to bless them. Even though they were their mean, stuff happens, stuff happens. But we have to realize that they were there to produce us and get us to where we needed to be. That's why I tell you, this class today, look around you. See what you like, what you don't like, what you want, what you don't want. Explain to your guides. Have a my Anita Evans here in camp would say, let's have a come let's have a come to Jesus moment with them. Talk to them. Explain to them. No, 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 we're not doing this. But give them a plan. Give them an idea of what you would like to see happen. I have that sense of humor, remember. They have that vibrational sense of humor. So don't allow them to go off in there. You can end up off in some kind of will off in some kind of wilderness and go, Well, this is what I wanted. Spirit goes, No, no, that's what you asked for. You asked for this. Allow yourself. I have people move halfway across the country because of someone. The individual dies. The person moves to the spirit world. Different things happen. They break up. The person leaves. He leaves them there. They're they're in this situation, but they weren't really supposed to be in that situation to begin with. But they've placed themselves there, even though nothing about getting there or propelling themselves there worked. It didn't work, but they still went. And now they have to kind of regroup. They've got to kind of, it's like someone's cut the pack mule loose and has taken off into the wilderness. Now they have to go chase their supplies because they're left on the path by themselves. Find your journey. Maybe, maybe one or two of you or somebody that you know has to backtrack a little bit. Maybe they have to walk, backtrack a little bit just to find the entrance to the path. It's better to backtrack just a few steps to walk a hundred steps in a direction you're not supposed to be. If you have to backtrack, don't feel guilty about it. Don't feel bad about it. Backtrack a little bit and set that in motion. Because I've had to backtrack in my life. I've had to move back and I thought I made the right decision, but sometimes you don't. And you look at it and go, this isn't working. Well, I wasn't about to keep walking down the same path that wasn't working for me. So I decided to backtrack a couple of steps, ask myself at that point, what do I see? How do I see these? How, how do I see these things? How am I reacting? I've learned very well not to react. I learned that by living here in Casadega. I don't react to things. Because once people know that you're injured, you're wounded, they are the people's circle that are also wounded, that also have been attacked. So they circle in your vibration. And then at that point, nobody's helping anybody. Everybody's wounded. That's why you step back. Sure, you can go to your home, cry, do whatever you need to do, punch the wall, sit quietly, sulk for a few moments, do what you need to do. But you leave your house with a smile on your face. My mother told me that many years ago. Make people wonder what you smile and make people wonder what you're up to. Sure, our lives are not going to run perfectly all the time. But if we allow ourselves to ask ourselves how we see it, what does it mean to us? Allow us to pick the best journey for us. And then allow ourselves to listen to ourselves when the journey isn't working out the way we thought it should. When we have to make that reversal a little bit to move off in a different direction. But I hope this helped you today and you encouraged you in some way to, to empower yourself. You have more power in your body in this lifetime. Because this is a conglomerate of every single lifetime that you have ever lived. 
you have got more power than you can imagine. And we're only going to be able, probably in this lifetime, to tap into, I have a pending question. Yes. Yes, Deb. Hi, Lois. Great call, by the way. My question is, now, when you dig yourself into that big hole, how do you start to get out when you're so stuck in that big hole? What you do is you start telling yourself, you start visualizing higher ground. Even though you don't see higher ground yet, you don't see it. It's like you've fallen into a well. You don't see the top of the well. You just know that you're in the well. And you've got to get out. So you start visualizing, visualizing top of the well. You start visualizing that. And that starts to raise the vibration, raise the energy. Sure, it's going to raise the energy around you, but in turn, it's going to propel people in and around your vibration to bring, to bring higher energies to you, which in turn then will raise your vibration. It's like pouring water into the well. Eventually, you're going to keep threading water until you get to the top of the well. So it keeps dropping energy into the vibration, energy in the vibration. It's uh, the law of attraction. It's the vibration. It's like the more energy you, the psychometry, the more, the more energy you put into something, the stronger and better the energy becomes. So the more you think about one subject, the stronger that subject will become within your life. So if you're thinking about something that doesn't quite work for you, think about something else. Put some other view in motion. So if you're in a hole, you can see the you you can see the well, you can see the hole. You have to visualize yourself seeing something else, some other vibration, and then it might take what it might take a little bit. Yeah. But what if you're stuck and you don't have the possibilities of what to see what's outside of that well? So where do you start with the envisions of yeah, that and get the ideas for that? I mean, it makes sense, but you start getting yourself quiet, getting yourself quiet. Ask for things in your life. What do you think you need in your life? What do you need? Ask for that out loud. If people around you, well, too bad. Ask for it out loud. Then get yourself quiet. And what are you telling yourself? What are you telling yourself? That's what you have to address. You have to address that voice within you. If you're saying, if you're saying, Lewis, I'm thinking positive. It's very positive energy. And I'd like to have this. And then all of a sudden you close your eyes and your inner voice is going, now nah, you'll never get that. You're in the well. Uh, you're going, no, I'm not. You have to change that voice. And sure, it takes a little bit of work. It takes a little bit of work by doing affirmations, by, by changing the mind thought, by changing the vibration, by attracting and asking your guides for your highest and best, highest and best, highest and best. And then allow them to produce the people into your vibration. But it's this whole thing of, of, of quieting that voice. When I started this thing today, it was quieting that voice, that voice within you. Because that is the most negative situation that we can have in our lives, is that inner voice telling us, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. You have to quiet that. You have to change the, the, the tone of the voice within you to change the outside motion. Because you can ask for everything in your life. But that inner voice is telling you, oh, you're never going to get that. You're going to still hear that voice lingering there. And it took me years. And now you might not want to wait years to get the voice quiet. But you start working on it. I start visualizing where do you see yourself in four years, five years? Where do you see yourself? Where do you envision yourself? That's kind of the, that's time your old inner vision board, your own inner vision board within your third eye. Where do you see yourself in five years? Visualize that. Visualize that vibration. Where do you see yourself? And I'll have clients tell me, say, I don't know where I see myself. Well, find some kind of vision of where you would like to see yourself. And if they give you better, great. If they don't, if they give you exactly what you visualized, that would be okay with you too. But visualize where you feel like you need to be, but quiet that inner voice. So just basically pick something that kind of feels good or you have an idea that might be what you want and that's higher than where you are, and just keep that vision until something starts changing. Keep a higher vision within your life. 
That's why you asked yourself for perfect health, the reason why not. That's why you asked you for, as all my guides always tell me, I look at one level and a guide said, well, think bigger. You have more power than that. Think bigger. Think bigger. What is bigger than where you are? What is bigger than what you've been asking for? What is bigger? Ask for that. So they give you a tiny little bit less than what you've asked for. You're still, uh, you're still thinking bigger, the vibration. You're still in visualizing that because you have to look at the people around you. If there's people that are without lack and all this stuff going on around you and all this stuff, you're going, ooh, this is not the neighborhood I want to be in. So you start to change the neighborhood. And by thinking the positive thoughts, the positive vibration, as I said here, there's a tape on the Internet, a Louise Hayes. 101 positive thoughts. Put that on a radio. Play it in your house. Just by her talking all these positive thoughts in your house, it changes the energy within the space. It changes it. It changes it to a higher vibration. Just by playing that within the vibration of the home. And then that way that allows positive people to start entering your life. And those positive people, what do they do? They bring gifts. They bring stuff that is going to encourage and bless your life. So it's just the start of looking at something more positive, uh, just something better than where you are. Just say, no, I want that. I want that or better. That would work. That would be okay. That or better. You'll take better, but that would work to allow them to maneuver you in that way. But it's just still the comes down to the law of attraction, but it also has all the other laws applied even with it to get you to the law of attraction to have things attracted into your life. So just quiet the inner voice, tell them what you're looking for, and move off in that direction. Okay. okay. Very great. Thanks, Lewis. All right. Thank you, guys. We'll be back next week. Uh, I know it's on my website what I'll be talking about next week. I know Lucerne's coming up. He's going to talk about communication here soon. I don't know if that's next week or not, but I know Lucerne. I'll be in trance, and I'll let Lucerne speak for the hour. Uh, but the question is, is I have events on my website, so if there's something you would like to attend or see, I'm trying to get it so it's online, too, so you can attend the events here in the camp online, too. So uh, we're working on that. We're in the process of working on that. So uh, but I'll be here next week at 3 o'clock, and we'll be talking again. Thank you, guys. Thank you.